Hey, Pierre, how's it going? Hey, Dave, how are you? Good. All right, let's talk today about how to work with CSV files within Notable. Uh, so I'm sitting here within a notebook, and one of the first questions we're going to get to is how to upload CSVs so they're accessible to your notebook. So over on the left sidebar here, the top option is going to show you the project files. Uh, you can see here this project, all I have is this one existing notebook, as well as a CSV file that I've previously uploaded. But let's walk through the steps to show how to upload new files to the notebook. So I can click here. I can hit Upload Files. I can click this Upload from Computer option here and then pick any different files that I want to add. I can multi-select if I want to add multiple files there. And you can see the progress of them being uploaded. There you can see I've done some previous uploads and now these current ones are coming in. And there it goes. And then those files will show up as being accessible to your notebook over on the left. Uh, another shortcut and easier way to do it here potentially is just drag and drop files. So I can take files that I have in this case on my desktop or from any other folders and I can drag them into that sidebar and make them accessible uh, to my project. But now that they're there, what can I do with those files? Well, one of the cool things that you can do with the Notable is you can just view the, that file natively. So if I want to view this CSV file here, I click the file. And instead of now viewing the notebook, I am now viewing the CSV file. Um, I can minimize the sidebar over here. You get the full screen of the CSV. Um, in this case, it's got 3,000 rows. You can see I can quickly and you know, easily scroll through all the rows there as well as through all the columns. And this grid has given me a lot of helpful information about the data. As you can see, kind of a histogram up at the top here that gives me kind of the shape of that data. Um, I can look at what uh, um, data type each one of these columns are, as well as uh, how many missing values um, are in that data, how many complete values are in there, and, and all, all those sorts of things. Um, from that, um, that, that sparkline view at the top there, I can also create uh, filters on this. If I want to kind of easily brush filters of this data, I can see it immediately being applied um, to all the account information down below, as well as the grid itself. I can even do more kind of powerful things of um, looking at the various columns in here. I can reorder them. I can rename them. I can hide the visibility of them and all the, that sorts of stuff. So it's a great way to kind of look at my data at a high level and get a sense of what's in uh, that CSV file. And Dave, the what, what about the what about the changes? Do we write them back to the source file? What do we do with them? Yeah, so the, they're being persisted here. And when I because I was going to talk about like one of the you know the the the, the points of this uh, this video here is talking about what you can do with CSV files within a notebook. And so now that I've made some changes here, and if I've, I've you know again reordered these columns, I've done these filters, I could have renamed some of the columns. If I want to now add this to a notebook, you can see this big button up at the top that says Add to Notebook. I click that. And now it's going to create a notebook um, that has the content that can read that uh, CSV file in. So you see the, the pandas code there is already pre-filled in for that Python cell, uh, as well as it had all of the changes that I previously made while in the CSV view uh, persisted for me there. So if I was initially looking at CSV and just kind of doing some exploration there, but then I realized, oh, I want to take this over to a notebook context. I want to add you know additional cells. I want to add markdown cells. I want to you know explain. Uh, what's happening right i can do all of that uh, by just clicking that add to the notebook option okay and so and we can i download ahead. the source file or can i download the the filtered file as well yes you can um so you can export this you can download the csv file here you can give the option to do the filter data or the unfiltered data um, for what you want to download as well as if you want to just go over here to the csv file you can download the csv file uh, from the project as well thanks if I go back to the original notebook that I was working on here, so you saw how just starting from a CSV file, I can view, I can do some wrangling of that data and I can easily add that to a notebook. Um, but if I have an existing notebook and let's say I've uploaded these CSV files, what's the best way to get it in there? Well, of course, manually, I'm given a, a notebook here. I can write Python code uh, as much as I want. So I can say I read CSV. Uh, I can copy one of these paths, for example, and then type it all out. And there we go. And that's one way to do it. Uh, but we also provide an easier shortcut here to just take um, any of these kind of more options actions for a file and just say add to notebook. And when you do that, it will not only add again the content of the pandas code that can read that CSV file, but it automatically adds that grid in there for you. So you don't have to execute that cell in order to get that grid returned. And then last, I'll just talk about what you can do now with that CSV file um, when you're in the notebook. So again, all that same data wrangling capability you saw before in the CSV file is present. I can do these filters. I can change the data types. I can change the order of the columns, the visibility of the columns, or et cetera. Um, but also, you get a lot of options to explore the visualization capabilities within Notable. So I'll just show you the quick first one here. Um, I can hit Data Prism, which is our data visualization suggestion engine. And you see it will suggest a variety of different visualizations that may make sense for this data to help us understand it better. 
Um, so in this case here, this was um, geo-coordinate data. Uh, this was a, a kind of a, um, an information about all the squirrels in New York City and Central Park. So you can see there, there's Central Park with all the squirrels in there, as well as an, another different variety of different visualization types that may help us make more sense of that data. We'll have more videos to explain more about data prism. So please check those out if you want to learn more about the data visualization capabilities within Notable.